Hello and welcome on Travel Talk. I'm Tajamud Hussain in Abu Dhabi. With me, Michael Gabler, Chief Executive Officer and Chairman of Avio Apps. Michael, welcome on the show. Good to see you again. Uh, Thank from you. From Berlin, we'll carry forward our mm -hmm. discussions. How's the outlook for tourism and travel industry globally? Well, globally, it's, it's, uh, it's the tendency remains very, very strong uh, in growth. Uh, the oil prices uh, make travel cheaper. Airlines, uh, most airlines or travel trade tour operators uh, give these incentives further to the travelers. That's an impact which we see in, in a lot of countries. Certainly, there's regions of the world which are somewhere uh, impacted uh, uh, negatively. We have the Russia, Ukraine uh, situation, there's some other niche markets, but all overall, travel remains a very, very strong uh, engine in the overall economy. Russia is down the economy over there, crisis. Has Correct. it affected Europe? Yeah, yeah. Uh, been a major source market for Europe. Well, Russia previously has been one of our top three markets on our global scale, and we have uh, 58 uh, owned organizations around the globe. So it's, uh, it's, it was and is a very important factor still. There is a downturn at the moment of uh, minus 25% in Russia, Ukraine, similar. And uh, that's uh, certainly, I mean, there's a, that result is, is, is to be expected. There's other regions in the world which are uh, coming up and, and compensating this kind of, uh, this situation. Right. When you look at the economic situation in the world, China's economy mm. is very low on this year. Mm. Oil prices have been very sluggish, especially from the Gulf markets mm. perspective. Brazil mm -hmm. not doing too well. You're right. You're right. Uh, are you still very optimistic on the growth? Principally, our job as a company is to make our clients successful, whether it's airlines, whether it's destinations, hotel companies, etc. And um, to be frank, if the economy is up or down, a good company always has to perform well. That's easier said than done. Yes. Reality is uh, Brazil has also impacts negatively in the overall economy. Uh, our clients uh, within Europe have uh, growing tendencies. So it's always up to us to make our clients winners, uh, among others, no matter what the overall economy is doing. China, as you say, is... Uh, well, when we say in, in the rest of the world, in the Western world, China is shrinking in growth numbers, and we're talking still about plus five, six percent, which in all other countries in the world would be exceptionally great. Great. So, travel terms, we see still the tendency of more Chinese traveling around the world and, and, and visiting uh, spots and, and other countries. Right. Halal tourism. This is a first ever exhibition here yes. in Summit. Uh, how do you see the prospects mm -hmm. for halal tourism going forward? I think it's a very smart idea to, to come up with halal tourism as a brand, as a, as a, as a niche, as an innovation if you want so. Uh, food uh, is something in, in travel which belongs to the, to the experiences which people love. Uh, yeah. they, they love Mediterranean, they love Asian food, they love steaks here, they love African barbecue, etc. Halal is something special which is known very much certainly in the region, which is very well known in the Islamic world which is partially known in the rest of the world, uh, but in days where you look for the speciality, it might be really uh, an eye-opener for, for some people having and, and digesting this kind of experience. So I think it's a very smart way. It definitely needs some years to develop, to brand, uh, but uh, it gives further value to the GCC areas, to the region, if that was not Gulf markets has been a major source market for European destinations. How European destinations are geared towards halal tourism and mm -hmm. halal tourism products. Right, it's um, it's recognised. Uh, our wish and our our intention is certainly to 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 make that fami familiar also to the to the European uh, society, but also to the European restaurants, etc. We have some some examples where uh, restaurants which have a strong tradition in their their own uh, authentic kitchen try to at least offer these stores for the Islamic or for the uh, halal visitors uh, to, uh, to win them as clients or keep them as, gain them as clients. So that, that's a process which has to st be stimulated, uh, but we are very optimistic to get these, uh, these things done. Again, it's another window of a restaurant to open, not to lose their identity, but to win more clients. Right. Now, Avio Raps is a global mm. agency. You work with global destinations. Mm. Do you promote halal travel as a segment with your clients' destinations? Um, we are actively then this year with uh, with the PR activity. Uh, we continues we continue there and expand our, our activity also towards sales, towards marketing. So it's it's not some, some single big move which we can make. It's a, it's a stimulation which takes uh, takes time. Uh, but it's our ambition to talk with the travel trade, with the with the travel media, to really brand it on one hand, but also uh, give a push towards the industry to make this uh, this niche halal. Uh, a product, so to speak. Right. Coming to aviation, which is one of the core areas mm -hmm. of the business as well, 
oil prices are down, mm. is it having a positive impact on airfares, and therefore mm. more numbers in right. terms of growth? Right. I mean, all overall, we see in the aviation industry with most players record, record results, and uh, airlines which nowadays um, don't make really profits or at least a very good break even I think they will face really problems in the, in the in the future it is becoming easier these days to be successful and I think it's a breath which uh, airlines also need around the world we, they have had uh, decades of, of difficulties and uh, that that helps people traveling more uh, it improves the yield in a certain way not every incentives uh, uh, brought for further on to clients so it's, it's, it's a very positive indication and you can look into any of the company's uh, quarterly results, it's record record results which, right. uh, which you have at the moment. Which again gives uh, expansion uh, or thoughts towards expansion. Here in this part of the world, in the Middle East, the airlines are uh, anyway extremely successful, extremely dynamic and I think the future will give them, prove them right. Do you see fares falling down further? It, it depends, certainly. Uh, we, we do see uh, fares becoming, uh, going more down because of the, the fierce competition uh, of more low-cost uh, models or hybrid models which are, are actively around the world. Um, so, yes, travel should become more cheaper with wide-body aircrafts, with more low-cost carriers, with more modern uh, approaches to the industry. And if you want, so Averips also, as a, as a business model, helps airlines to be right. cheaper right. because we simply uh, convert fixed costs and variable costs and are being paid on performance only. Right. A wish of every entrepreneur, actually. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> uh, every wraps since we spoke in mm -hmm. March this mm -hmm. year, you've had some ambitious growth plans, new offices being opened. Tell mm -hmm. us about your uh, future yes. growth plans nice. and what has changed sure. since March. Sure. Well, we've done uh, a number, or especially one big acquisition uh, in Europe of uh, two market-leading companies, which was uh, which kept a big of our strong focus of, of our, our management. Um, besides of this, we are at the moment uh, evaluating to open up uh, a new nation called Iran, which is not far from here, but it's a very strong nation. Uh, there is a change of the image. Uh, of uh, the sanctions and all of these kind of uh, characters. Uh, at the moment, there's a delegation of Avirabs there to uh, consider either a merger acquisition or a new startup. From Iran, there's neighboring countries which we think can be opened. Um, so the, the, the Middle East areas uh, is, is a point in CIS. We've opened up Kazakhstan last year. We might consider Azerbaijan this year. In Latin America, there's Peru and Venezuela on our roadmap to be opened. And Africa was in our roadmap about two years ago, and then came this tragic uh, uh, disease uh, impact uh, with Ebola. Uh, now we are taking it up on our roadmap. We're thinking about countries like Kenya, like Ghana, Egypt, and Morocco. Uh, so besides of our uh, existing organization in South Africa to have the, let's say, the regions in Africa pretty, pretty covered and then start growing from there. All right. How important is the Middle East market for you in your growth? It's, it's becoming growingly important in, in two directions. One thing is our own, our own office, which is growing a number of clients, etc. And expanding now with the Iran and Saudi, which is also another uh, area which we will consider to open up shortly. And besides of this, we have a number of, of clients from this region. Uh, we have Emirates in a number of countries which we represent. We have Etihad. We are representing Gulf Air in the UK and some other countries. Um, we have Dubai Export Association. Besides of travel and tourism, we represent the, uh, the uh, companies based in UAE which export their articles around the globe. So we help them globalizing their products and their, their brand. So there's a number of things which we do, hotel companies, all in this region, and we think there is room for, for further growth, definitely. What is your advice to destination brands, tourism brands, uh, in the PR space, mm. how to brand themselves, how to go forward in this changing dynamics mm. of uh, media, social media, you know, everything has changed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I forgot we, we represent also Dubai tourism and we represent Abu Dhabi uh, tourism in, 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 in diverse countries. Uh, right. the, the advice, uh, well, it's not me to advise uh, certainly the, the, the companies because we have a close consultancy and exchange of, of, of ideas and, and strategies with them. Fact of the matter is today it's the, the approach is more diverse. Uh, we, we have not only social media, we have a number of things which we, where we have to find the client uh, digital and physical and uh, uh, the advice is simply to use smart marketing money and smart mar marketing funds uh, to really see return on investment. Uh, we are the only company which has also the data, the travel data available. In other words, we see what activities are showing results. So on one hand, it's a diversification of activities uh, and the other thing is using intelligent marketing money and see if there's a return on investments being done. 
Super. It's Michael. It's been Thank a pleasure you. talking to you on Travel Talk. Thank you. Thank you.